Hello and welcome to another video here at CustomSawWorks.com. Today I'll be taking two inch and a half by inch and a half by eighth inch thick aluminum mangles that are six feet long and turning them into working sawmill rails for use with the Zosum bracketing system. Starting at one end of the angle iron, I place the first set of holes 10 inches from the end to the center line, scribing the line using a combination square and scribe to mark the center of the holes. And using a center punch, I punch the holes to be drilled. From the back side of the angle to the open leg end, I center two holes, one half inch down from the back and the other inch and an eighth down from the back, thus marking the center of the hole. By doing so, this will put the holes half inch from the back of the angle, five inches on center, ten inches from the end. To continue, mark one six foot length of angle from the baseline of the ten inches to the next set of holes, which are twelve inches on center, one five consecutive center line marks, twelve inches apart, for a total of twelve drilled holes. After moving the angles to the vise, angles are placed back to back, through bolted with a quarter by three quarter hex head bolt and tight using a nylock nut, making sure to flush the line angles on the ends. By doing so, the angles are placed in the correct drilling alignment for the second rail. Now that the angle with the 12 holes, 9 32nd inch in diameter are drilled down one leg of the angle, the other angle is placed below this angle, leaving the already drilled holes exposed. Use additional clamping devices to secure and align the angle as you move down its leg. If needed, clamping and unclamping next to the holes being drilled. Repeat this task until all remaining holes are drilled. Doing so, finish the second rail. This completes the drilling of the two rail glides. Now moving on, pictured above is the Zosin Chainsaw Milling Bracket System. Comes with level, two system rail brackets and several wood screws and one drive bit. At this point I have attached one of the Zosin brackets to the end of the rails that had been drilled 10 inches from one end. Using two quarter by three quarter hex bolts and nylock nuts. I snug the two pieces together using a wrench. After determining the length of the log and the spacing of the holes placed in the rails, I now attach the second Zosin system bracket to the rails using the same quarter by three quarter bolts and nylock nuts I tight the bracket. Pushing the rail and bracket tight against the log on one end, I use a block of wood cut to fit between the rails on the other end to fill any gaps between the log and the bracket. It is important to note when mounting the Zosin brackets to the rails that the orientation of the bracket's ears are facing outward from one another. By doing so, you are able to swing the bracket back and out of the way in one direction, but at the same time, allows the bracket when securing them to the log to keep the bracket from moving forward in the opposite direction, therefore bottoming the brackets out against the top of the rails and allowing for a secure and tight fastening. The final operation in the mounting process would be to level the rails making sure that they are parallel to each other. This is especially important for long cuts. Finally, not only do you want your rails parallel to each other, but also running down the log in a horizontal direction. This is usually done by measuring from the pith on both ends of the log. As seen here, by allowing 10 inches of rail before the brackets, this provides adequate space between the log and the chainsaw for maintaining proper support as the sled rests on the rails.
drawing plans for the guide rails used with the Zosim bracket system are available for download at customsolvers.com in our shop. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Also follow along on our journey as we build a workshop from the ground up and brand the website customsolworks.com. If so, hit the subscribe button and watch our other videos. Thanks again.